everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how I make a Tamagotchi case uh, crocheted for my Tamagotchi. I have two ways I do it. So I'm going to do two different videos. In this video I'm going to do one of the versions and then I'm going to do the next version in the next video. Um, I'm going to show you both though and explain which one I like better and why, but there's merits to both versions. Um, so if you watch this video and you're not so sure about this type of case, then make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified um, when you can check out my next video, which might be an easier case or it's different. I mean, they both have merits. So we'll take a look. I'm going to make a crocheted case for my Tamagotchi V3. I just got this in the mail today. So this little guy needs a protection case. So let me show you the two versions that I have. Uh, I have this one, which is like the fluffy case. And then I have this one, which is like the standard crochet yarn. Today I'm going to show you how to make this fluffy case. Um, so this is my preference. I like this style of case better. Even though it's more bulky, I find that my Tama feels more protected in this style. It's a little bit more spongy and it feels like if it fell on the floor it would absorb, absorb more impact than this flat yarn would. Um, it's also more grippier for me to hold. So if I'm playing like a game or I have to push a lot of buttons, I feel like I have more control holding it in this kind of like fluffy case, uh, more so than I do in this. I also find like in these ones, the Thomas that I have that have cases with the straight yarn, it slides around a little bit. It doesn't hold as nice. Uh, so I find that these are a little bit more snug. The other thing is these are really forgiving. So if you're not great at crocheting, these ones are great for hiding mistakes. You can't really see the stitches. They kind of just fluff together for the most part. So, you know, if you miss one or you just kind of, it's a little janky, you know, you're going to be okay with this style. The only thing is that the stitches are hard to see with this yarn. So if you're not comfortable um, crocheting with this type, just stick around for the next video uh, that's coming out and I'll show you how to do the flat yarn where it's really easy to see the stitches but it's easy to feel the stitches. So this one, and again, it's forgiving. So if you make mistakes, it's easy to hide them. So that's my spiel on both versions. Uh, so let's get started with this case. I'm gonna show you the yarn I'm using. I just have this Bernay baby blanket yarn. It's this fluffy kind of yarn. Uh, it's a bulky weight. Uh, I picked this up at Walmart. It was like $10 for this ginormous ball. Uh, super inexpensive. The label recommends to use a US N13 or a nine millimeter hook. Uh, today I'm going to be using the 7mm, so a little bit smaller, but I like the stitches a little bit tighter on the cases. Again, though, you don't have to have this size of hook. If you check the yarn ball and it um, recommends a certain size and you don't have that, maybe you have a size bigger or a size smaller, that's okay too. You can totally be flexible and, it, and it's going to be okay. I'm going to show you when you make this case, how to make it work for your Tamagotchi. If I were to just give you instructions with specific stitch counts and um, rows and what to do, it's not going to fit your Tama because everyone crochets different. We all have different tensions and maybe you're using a slightly different yarn. Um, so I'm going to show you the best way to get the best fit and how to be flexible with it. So let's get started. Um, before I begin, uh, basically I'm going to show you the components of what we need to build, the structure of the case. Uh, there's three components to it. So to start, we're going to want to crochet the back piece. So we want to make sure that we crochet a circle that fits all the way around the edge and just protrudes a little bit outside of the edge of our tama. That's like the first piece. After we have that, we're going to work on the side walls of the case that will extend up around our tama, kind of hugging it and making it like a bowl shape for our crochet case. Once we get that done, then we're going to work on the finishing edge, which makes it a little bit more snug, uh, draws it in around the tama and makes it look polished like that finished look super easy to do. I'll show you that. And I'm also going to show you how to include holes for little things like these. This tama, I'm going to tell you it's complicated because this guy has got his little antenna that's not even. It sticks out to the side in a, and it's bigger on the side than it is on the side. Blech. It's painful. And then there is this, this connection plate that we have to be mindful of. And then there's the little key ring loop that we have to be mindful of as well. I'm going to put those spaces in my case, but if you're not comfortable making the spaces, I'm going to show you how to do it, but you can go over it and you don't have to include them. There are Thomas I've made where I haven't included spaces. 
Like for instance, on my picks, I included the hole for the camera, but I didn't include the space for the little charm. I was a little bit newer at crocheting at that point, and I think I honestly forgot about it. It's okay, you don't have to include the spaces. It's easy to leave them out. Uh, but I do wanna try including each of these things. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that, and I'll tell you how to skip it too. So it'll be easy. This is gonna be super easy and flexible for you. So let's get started with the bottom part first. So I've got my yarn here. We're gonna make a magic loop to begin. And the best thing about a magic loop is once we make it, we can pull the center and it will close up tight and make that center piece and keep our ends woven in so we can just trim them when we're done. It'll be super easy, a nice way to start. So taking your hand like this, you're gonna put your yarn tail in between your bottom two fingers. Just pinch it like that and then bring your thumb over and just kind of hold it tight. You're gonna make a peace sign with your two top fingers and we're gonna wrap the yarn around twice around our peace sign. So you're gonna take it like this, take the yarn, wrap it over the top of your two peace sign fingers, wrapping it over like this, bring it back around. When you go around the second time, you wanna make an X right here. So you're gonna take this yarn and put it over the top, over here this way, and then wrap it around the top of your first loop and then you're gonna bring this tail back and just tuck it between your thumb and your finger here. Um, I'm just gonna take off my ring before I go further because that's gonna catch. And I'm so sorry, I forgot to do that. I should've did that first. So now we have these two strings here. You're gonna take your hook and you're gonna go under your first, your first loop, you're gonna go over your, first, your second loop, that back loop, and you're gonna hook it and then pull it under and then push your hook down a little bit and then roll it forward, keeping the loop on the hook. You're gonna come up towards you and then out to the left. So now you have that loop on your hook, you've still held on to all your strings and you've got this wrapped yarn. So now we need to do a single crochet with that last tail that was tucked between our thumb and our finger back here. I'm gonna let that go. And so this tail, so we're gonna very gently let go of the string, slide our fingers out. I'm gonna pinch here at the base of the hook, just keeping it a little bit taut so we can make sure it doesn't move. Grab this string here with our fingers and we're going to make a single crochet here, like that. And that's our magic loop. So just unravel, your little tail will be wrapped around a couple times. Uh, just untangle it there and so what's gonna happen is when we're done, we're gonna pull this string and it's gonna bring all this together. But before we do that, we're gonna put some stitches into the magic loop to create the base of the back, the starting spiral. Now, I'm gonna start with seven stitches. I find that with my yarn and my tension, that seven stitches works really well for me. I'm not gonna count this first stitch, by the way. I'm gonna put seven fresh stitches in my magic loop. You could put more or less. I think six is an average number. If you find that you knit really or crochet really tight, you might need to put eight, maybe nine, if you're really tight knitter or crocheter. Otherwise, if you knit loose or crochet noose, loose, noose, <laughs> um, you might just need six. I'm gonna do seven. When you're crocheting around, you're gonna put your stitches all the way around this ring. And when you're doing that, keep these two strings together. Keep your tail and your magic loop string together. And what's gonna happen is that will weave in your end automatically so that when you're done your project, you just have to trim this tail. You don't have to uh, work and do extra work to tuck it in at the end. So that's a little cheat, um, a little trick to help you. So I'm gonna work seven stitches into this magic loop. Seven crochet, single crochet. So there's one, two, Three, and I'm gonna pull my tail just a little tight because this is a little bit loose there, but that's good. So we'll move over to number four. Bring up some more yarn. Five, six, and seven. So you're gonna end up with something that looks like this, and that's got my stitches on it. I'm gonna pull this tail tight and it should curl around to make almost a circle. 
pull it nice and tight. Don't break your yarn though. Um, now I'm going to go back into the top of my stitch and it's roughly that stitch. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you put it in the wrong stitch, it's okay. This yarn's forgiving. You won't really see it. You might have a bump. You probably won't. But I mean, it's hard to see the stitches. It's hard to count. I just kind of guessed. I think it looks pretty good there. I'm going to put a single crochet into that space. And so there is the beginning of my little donut here. I'm going to pull this tail again just to make sure it's nice and tight and making a nice tight circle. Now that I have the starting circle of my back, I need to work in the round. And so there's two ways to do this in crochet. Um, typically you could work a complete round and then do one chain up or two chains up and then work another round and then do another couple chains up and work your other round. But we're going to make this easy and flexible. So I'm just going to work in a spiral, just crochets, single crochets all the way around until I get this case back to a size where it sits comfortably covering the entire back and then has a little bit of an edge, just a little bit. So we're going to do that. Now, as we work this up, it's going to need to get bigger around or it's going to curl in and we don't want that yet. So what you're going to need to do is increase the stitches. Typically you could do every second stitch. You could put an extra stitch. I think for this, I'm going to start with doing one single crochet in the first stitch and then two single crochet in the next stitch to increase it. And then if it starts to curl, I'm going to start doing two single crochet in each stitch to make this sit flat because we really want this back to sit flat. So let's start that way. And also doing it this way, just doing it in a spiral in the round, we don't have to count our stitches. So to start, I'm going to put one single crochet in the first stitch and then two single crochet in the next stitch to help start that increase. And then one single crochet in the next stitch and then two whoops, single crochet in the next stitch, one and two. And then one single crochet and then two single crochet. I can see that it's starting to kind of curl. You can see that I'm not too concerned about that yet. I can still pull this tail make it a little bit tighter and it still sits pretty flat. It's pretty good. It will curl a little bit, but for the most part, you probably work it out until it starts to really curl. I'm going to go ahead with one crochet and then two crochet. It's starting to curl on me again. I might switch to two, some debating. Maybe I'll do one more set of one and two, and then I will switch. And if you find yours isn't curling, then keep doing the pattern that you're doing. Um, I do want this to sit flat. I want to make sure it doesn't curl because when it does this, then when I flip my work, it's going to puff out here and I don't want that. So I'm going to switch to doing two stitches in each single crochet stitch. So I'm going to do one and two, and it should start to flatten out a little bit and stop that puff. Uh, next stitch. One and two. One and two. Pull my tail. I think I got that as tight as I can, so I can't get any more flatter out of that. one and two. If you find, like I'm starting to get a bit of a bowl here, I have to wonder if I even need to go one more. Mm, let's see. One and two. One, two, let's do one more. Oops, that one's too big. 
Maybe it doesn't want me to do three in this one. I don't know. It's just maybe I'm going to do two and then three. One, two. Let's see. That's looking actually pretty good. So I feel like this is looking pretty good. I think it might be the size I need. I'm going to flatten it out here. Got my lump sitting under there. And so what you want to do is keep comparing with the size of your Tamagotchi. And what you want is it to sit and cover the back, plus have a little bit of a protrusion. This one, I need a little bit extra room because I've got to work around so many elements here. Uh, if you didn't have this version with the antenna, maybe you're just leaving a space for the connection and the, and the key ring. You might not need it to be out this much. Again, though, it's a bulky yarn, so it's going to be an average. But about this space is going to work. So now what I need to do is start working out on the next round that we talked about. So that's working up the walls of the case to create the edge that wraps around the Tama. Uh, what I need to do is I need to leave a space for the key ring, a space for the connection plate, and then a space for the antenna. I'm going to start that at the beginning of this wall round. Uh, that's going to help me and help me know that it acts as a guide of where I've started the round and where to connect to. So I'm going to start, I've got the, the right side out of my yarn and I'm going to start with this antenna. I'm going to crochet maybe like a chain two and then connect it to the same space and see if that helps uh, create the hole. Or actually I might do it in the next, yeah I'm going to do it in the next space. So I'm going to, this is how I'm going to make that space for the antenna. The antenna is small, so I don't need a very big space. I'm just going to chain two. I don't think it's going to need more than that. It might not even, it should, it might be all right. Uh, but we'll try it. So I'm going to chain two, and then I'm going to put a single crochet in the next stitch to create that hole. So now we've got this little hole peeking through, and that's going to be our antenna hole. So I'm going to bring this back. And again, this part's going to be really fiddly because it doesn't fit yet. So you got to just kind of imagine, but I put it over the antenna. So I find that that fits the hole pretty good. When I do that, I've still got enough space around that I should be able to wrap this up. It's looking a little big, but let's keep going and see how we do. The next part is I need to make the space for the connection plate. I think three stitches should do that. So I'm going to make three stitches and then try connecting it to see if that hole is big enough for the connection plate. So I'm going to do a chain three for that three stitch space. And then I'm going to bring this back and put it on the antenna again, because I want to make sure that that's comfortable. And then I need to figure out where to connect, uh, connect this chain to. So I think I'm, well, hmm. Okay, so looking at it, with this is our setup so far. I feel like if I connected it over here, like in this stitch, it's going to be overlapping with the key loop. I feel like I'm going to have to go here. I think it's going to cover up a little bit of the connection plate. It's a bulky yarn. I'm willing to make that sacrifice for having this style of case. So I'm just going to single crochet in this space and that's going to create the little hole for that connection plate. So again, coming back, I'm going to put this on the antenna and then make sure this is lined up with the connection plate and it is so that's going to work um, and then I'm going to work on the key loop next I think I'm probably going to need two stitches for that so I'm going to do a chain two and then I'm going to single crochet into the next set of oops next stitch to secure that down single crochet so now we've got three holes we've got the antenna the connection plate, which is the big one, and then the little keyring hole. I want to make sure that the keyring hole fits through. So I'm just going to do a quick test to make sure I can push that through. And it seems that I can, so I should be okay there. I'm going to continue on with the walls of my Tama. So I'm going to know that the beginning of my round is this first hole, because that's where I started. So that works as a good stitch marker. I need to keep crocheting all the way around until I get back to this hole, and then I'll know I've done a complete circle. So the way you do that is to work up the walls, you just do single crochets all the way around. And what's going to happen is it's going to your work's going to start curling in and making those 
walls, basically, that are going to wrap up around your tama. It's going to look like a bowl. And that's what you want because you want it to start getting more snug around your tama. If you were to do this and it didn't wrap enough, you found that it was too loose, then you could decrease some stitches here. So the way you could do that is instead of doing one single crochet in every stitch around, you can gather two together by sticking in your hook, wrapping over your yarn and pulling it through, and then immediately sticking it in the next hole, wrapping over your yarn, pulling it through with three loops on your hook, and then yarn over and pull through all three. That's going to gather those two stitches and make it a little bit tighter. I might need to do that. This is feeling kind of loose, but let's see. We're going to do one single crochet around. We'll see how it goes just to see what we're working with. It might be okay, but we will check it. And then that's where we're going to make the adjustment. So I'm going to go all the way around until I get to the beginning where I started and made those holes for the openings. And I know my first hole is that pink one, which that's an easy way to remember because it's where the color changes. Perfect. And did I do in that one? Yes, I did. Okay. So let's, this is kind of weird right now because we've got those spaces, but we will clean those up. Oops. So it goes like this. Flip this over. So if I were to put this through, and then put this through and I've got the hole for that, the hole for this. That hole seems big. This hole seems big. I'm not sure I like three there. Maybe that's what the problem is. So the case is too big. It's too big. So what I'm going to do, I find it's too big and I think it's too big at the circle. So I'm going to take this out and rip back to where I made these spaces. I'm going to take the spaces out so I know that was the beginning of my wall round. And I had this, which I'm going to check it. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So let's do that. Let's just pull out a couple of these. That's where we did the three, right? Because it was starting to curl. Maybe we stay with the two. Maybe the two is okay. Let's put this in like this. I'm going to pull out actually one of those because I honestly think it's... Maybe it's all right like that. Let's try that size. I think that could still work. So we're going to start there. That's what we're going to do. Just make the circle a couple stitches smaller. And maybe that's going to be okay. So going back to what we did for the antenna, we did um, two stitches, so a chain two stitch. We're gonna start working back on the walls again. Chain two stitch and connect in the next stitch beside it with a single crochet. And then we did three stitches across for the connection plate. I'm gonna try two this time. It felt a little big when I did it last time, so let's try two. Because maybe two is okay. And if it does cover up a little bit, I'm okay with that because I can always just pull it back when I need to connect my Tama, but I want to make sure that I have that opening to do it with in the first place. So if I put the antenna through here, then I'm going to guess that it probably needs to connect right here. I think that that's going to be the best stitch to use to connect that space. So let's do that. And then I need to do the key loop. I know the key loop is two stitches. Again, just like the antenna. And I'm going to put that in the next chain to, or chain space. Sorry, the next cross shape space. So we've got our three holes. One, two, three. Our big one and our two little ones. So now we're going to start working in the round again. Going all the way around to do a single crochet back to the beginning of this little hole here. So... That's what we're going to do all the way around. So single crochet, it should start curving inward this time. And it might work a little bit better now that I've taken out those couple stitches from the back circle. I think it just needed to be a little bit tighter. And single crochet all the way around back to the hole, but don't crochet past the holes because the holes are the beginning part of this round. 
they are their own space as it is. You don't have to redo them. And we're getting close here, just making sure I do not crochet into the first hole. I've got one more stitch left, that's good. Okay, it's starting to come up now, that's working better. Okay, so we're starting to get our bowl, it's kind of, you can see it's kind of flat on the back, and then it's working up these edges. I'm gonna put this in just to double check it again. Oops, I gotta turn my work out to the right side. And you can tell that this is the inside of your work because your tail's in here, that's where your inside's gonna be. And finding the holes, there's the first two holes, and this one here, I'm gonna slide the key ring through this hole. Okay, I think this is better with the two. It's a little bit tighter, it's gonna cover up a little bit of the connection plate, but it's okay, because I can just pull that back when I need to uh, connect. And this is looking really good. It's still loose, so we're gonna make that tighter. Now, we're gonna do the finishing edge for this. That's the other good thing about this yarn is it's quick to work up because it's bulky, so it takes up more space. It's easier to do. So I'm gonna flip this so the right side is facing out. We have this little tip here. You can try pulling your yarn tail a little bit more. Look at how much space I brought in. And that makes that a little bit more tighter. This will sit down too when it's on your tama. Uh, but yeah, so we've got, we're ready to work over these holes and we're gonna do our last round. We're gonna do our finishing round. I'm gonna show you the best way to do that. And it's super easy, a little bit different. It'll create a nice clean edge and look a little bit different than the regular stitches. Even though it's a bulky yarn, you will still see the finished edge a bit. It's gonna create kind of like a braided edge like this one has. It just looks a little polished. It brings it in tighter. So I'll show you with this um, piece here. It's easier to see. So what we've been doing up to this point is we've been putting our hook through these two loops, uh, this stitch, which is the V, and doing a single crochet into the stitch. Now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pick the one loop, either the front or the back, I'll show you on the uh, final piece, but you're just gonna wanna crochet into one of these loops. What that's gonna do is it's gonna push this inside loop towards the inside of your case, and so it just kinda hides that ragged edge, and it makes this look a little bit different and it looks polished. It just gives it a little bit of something to get that finished look. Super easy to do. You would think just doing one stitch instead of two wouldn't change it, but it actually does. So let's do that. So we've got the right side facing. Remember the tail's on the inside here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way around once just on the outside edge of the loop. So taking the of the two, we're going to take the one closest to us. What's going to happen is that inside one's going to push forward and go down inside the case and it's gonna hide under your Tamagotchi. You're gonna not do a single crochet, you wanna do a slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through both loops. So you're gonna put your hook into the first loop, yarn over, pull through the first hole, or the loop, and then pull through the second loop. You're gonna do that all the way around. So yarn over, pull through one, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through one, pull through two. And make sure you're only going through that first loop it's going to get a little bit tighter around as well because we're doing slip stitches it kind of tightens it up a bit but that's a good thing because we want our case to wrap around nice and snug and keep our tamagotchi secure so we'll go all the way around it's going to start curling in that's what we want as it's doing it i'm just going to flip this out uh, yes, we did that one. Okay, we'll do over here. And if you haven't pre-ordered the new Tamagotchi that's coming out, the Uni, I'll put a link in the description below and you can check that out. Some of the items are already sold out. I noticed that the watch bands uh, are already sold out and the dark, like the black lanyard. There's two lanyards. There's a white one called Marble and then there's a black one with like, it has a black background, basically the same design and that one's sold out. The two watch bands were a black one and a white one, and both of those are sold out. They're just alternative watch bands, so if you do just order the Tamagotchi, which is what I did, you'll still get a watch band with it. But the ones that come with it are bright colors, like purple and pink. I know some people do prefer the neutral colors. So what's going to happen is we're getting down to the holes. We got one, two, three, so we got a couple more. 
edges to do around. What I'm noticing, so I'm going to have to fix this, and I'll show you how I fix it so that you can do yours too if that's what you want or need to do. Uh, so it's come around, but it's still kind of loose. It's not tucked in tight like I'd like. So we're going to decrease some stitches. I'm going to rip some out and we're going to do that. But let's just see what it looks like because it's always good to compare where you're at and you can really get a gauge of what you need to do by doing this. I'm going to put the key loop through because it's really important that it, it emulates as closely as possible to what the finished product is going to be. And so I've got the hole for everything there and then pull it through. So it is, it doesn't need much, honestly. It's a little bit loose, but I think we can tighten that up. So we're gonna maybe close, maybe decrease a couple on each side to bring it together more. When you're decreasing stitches, try to do it evenly around the circle. If you do one over here, try to do one over here. Don't just do two here and then even all the way around. So maybe a couple in the pink, a couple in the purple. Let's try that. I think that's going to tighten up our case a little bit. Make it a little more snug. Again, like I said in the beginning, this one is a tricky case because there's so many pieces to work around. So it's not going to be as tidy, unfortunately, but we're going to do our best. So I'm working in the purple right now. I need to go back down to the pink and do um, basically gather some here. And then I'm going to gather some on this side. So I'm going to pull out back to the midway of the pink ish. Let's see, we got whole, whole, whole. So maybe there. And I'm going to show you how to decrease. So we're going to still work in those front stitches. So just yarn over, yarn over, and pull through both of those. Don't yarn over again. Just make sure I can grab them. And just yarn over like that. Because that's how we're working, is just with yarn overs, we don't want to add a single crochet there. It's going to make a bulge, and it's not going to be pretty. So I'm going to work. Let's see. Let's check where the holes are. We got hole, hole, hole. So we could probably go up, maybe gather this purple and this white would be a good marker, just to estimate. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just to get a rough estimation of where to put those gathered stitches. So I'll show you again. You put your hook through, yarn over, pull through, hook through the next front loop, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through all of the loops on your hook. The two back ones, basically. It's a little fiddly, but there we go. It gathers that a little bit, makes it a little bit tighter. And let's do these two. Let's see, one, two, three, we could do like feel like I might need to do another one right here actually because it seems kind of loose. Around these holes it seems kind of loose. I'm going to gather these two as well. I don't know if it's great to do it right in this spot. Maybe I should have did it at the bottom. I'm honestly kind of thinking I wish I had done it at the top of the holes. But let's see what we got. We'll see how it fits because maybe we don't need to do that. So just marking again, where are those holes? So they're right there. I'm gonna pull this out. So I'm gonna put this into the first hole on this side, if I can get it. Through there. And then that hole is for the antenna. That little hole for, again, this is a bulky yarn, so we have to, oh, that fits really nice. That feels pretty good happy with that. Okay, so I feel like, let me see what's going on here. Just kind of checking everything. I do kind of like that this is still kind of hidden because it will protect it with that bulky yarn. And again, there is a space for the connection plate, but it's not super showing, so I can just pop it up when I need it to connect instead of having to take my case off. And this fits perfect. That's really nice. Happy with that. Um, so here's the thing. Here's where I'm at. So I think this is almost perfect, but I feel like it's loose up here. So when I was gathering and starting the edge to do the finished edge, I feel like I should have gathered a couple here. I've gathered one over here, two sets over here. I feel like I need one here. So I'm going to rip it out 
just to make it that much perfect. I could finish this off and be done with it and it could work, but I really want this to be really perfect. So we're just gonna do that. And I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind me showing you, you know, not just everything's perfect, but ways to make it better for, for you. Okay, so let's pull this out. Uh, yes, we knit our crochet in this direction. So let's go back to the beginning of the holes where we started. So here we go. Here's the three holes. One, two, three. I'm just going to pull out to the beginning when we started doing those loops right there. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm debating what I should do. We had three or two, two. Maybe we should do them here. You can almost feel that this part's a little bit looser anyways. Okay, I'm gonna do two at the top. So let's do a regular pull through here, a regular like slip stitch through this front loop here, and let's gather these two guys. So there's one, there's two. We're gonna gather, I'm trying to work a little bit tighter too. Um, we need this one to go through. Oh, that was actually easier to do it that way. Okay, now we're going to do one at each side. On the left side and the right side, once we get past these holes. I honestly feel like I could. Okay, so the holes again. One, two, three. We want to do one over here and one over here. So I'm using these as my marker. That's my top of my work. So this side and this side. So maybe after this next stitch, I'm going to gather two together. Again, just to make it a little bit tighter. I think it needs to be. I think this is going to be great. Pull it through both of those loops on your hook. Now we got to work out to the next side. So I'll do a regular slip stitch in the front loop all the way around until I get to the other side of my work. Which I feel like I'm getting close. So there's one, two, whoops, one, two, three holes. And so we want to do it somewhere around here, I think. So somewhere in the white. I'll use that as my marker. When I get to the white, I want to do another gather, like a decrease, basically. And where's that last hole? It's up here. Okay, so we can go into the white. I don't have to do it yet. Maybe here. I'll do it here. So there's, whoops, just into the front loop. I'm just going to pull that first one over because it seems to be easier for me to do that. And then pull through that. Next one, and then back into the front loop all the way around, just a slip stitch coming back to that starting area, which is at our first hole. I feel like I need to do, this feels a little loose here too. Oh, we did two on the last, didn't we? Maybe I'm going to do these two as that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that. It's a little loose here, and I forgot to do that. I did the two before, so gosh, watch it be too tight now. Oh, we're going to try it. Okay, let's pull this one through, and then through there, and then that puts us at, so you can see that the edge is a little bit flatter. It's kind of got that braided look. I think it's working really well, and this is feeling tight. It looks like an egg. I think this is going to work. I think it's going to be nice, so let's test it out here and flip it around. And find the holes again find the holes uh they're over here okay so we're going to put actually let me put that in first that's easier to just do that on its own before the tama gets in and you only have to push that through one so you know if you have to force it a little bit it's not going to stay that way it doesn't have to you don't have to worry that it's kind of tight okay this is great this is looking good it's got the space for the connection plate space for the key ring and the little antenna's got its own little space. And it looks really snug all the way around. It's very even. I'm really happy with this. I've done three versions. And I'm happy to say I, I like this one best. So let's finish this off. I'll show you how to complete it. Because that's important too. And then we'll take a look at how it looks. So I'm going to set my tama aside. Go back to where I was. Okay, this part's easy. Look, I have a... Oh no, I... <laughs> 
<laughs> I was going to say I missed a stitch. I have a hole. That's the hole for this stuff. Okay, I'm getting tired. <laughs> I'm really tired. Okay, so let's finish this off. What you're going to do is you've got your hook in the last stitch that you did. You're going to take your yarn and just trim it like three, four inches. It, it doesn't have to be a very long uh, tail like this. And then just take your yarn and pull up and pull your yarn all the way through. So you don't need to do anything fancy. Just pull it through and then kind of hold your fingers and pin, like just lightly pinch it, hold it taut and pull it through and it creates that knot. Um, and we're going to weave this down into the inside of your case. So remember your tails on your inside. That's a good marker. Uh, I usually just weave this in through one stitch at a time and just one row down each time. So, oops, that's just undid that. That's not what I want to do. Oh my God, what is going on? Life is going crazy right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Back to where we were. Okay. So we're going to just weave this down into one stitch down. Let me see what I can grab here with my hook. Uh, we'll pull that through. And there's no perfect way to do this. It's just hide that string. Whatever you can do to hide that string the best, do that. I like to try to pull it through just one loop, like kind of how we did the front edge. Um, just because that way you don't see it through the back. If you were doing like a flat yarn, you would definitely want to do that. And you would understand, like, it would be easier to see how to find those levels. Um, this looks like maybe a possibility here. Maybe not. It's tight. It's tight. I usually like to do about three levels if I didn't mention that. And so just getting it, yeah, just down off that edge and then trimming it close to your work. Don't cut your work though. Great. And then, so we just have the center tail. And like I mentioned before, uh, you weaved in your edges when you did your stitches around and held the tail together with the loop. So you don't need to worry about this guy. You're going to pull it tight to see if you can draw that center in anymore just to make it sit flat. And it did come in quite a bit, so that's awesome. Then you're just going to trim it. And you can leave a little bit sticking up just to be comfortable. Your tom is going to be in there. No one will see it. It'll be great. It's going to be great. Okay, let's put this guy together. He is going to be so happy. I don't know if it's a girl or a boy. How do you tell? Oh, it's named Meg. This is not my Tama. Can you see that? It's named Meg. M-E-G-G, -G, like egg. Oh, that's cute. Username Kate's. Hmm. Oh, that's cute. Okay. Good job. Good job. Meg's. Meg. Meg. <laughs> Okay, let's put the Tama together. <laughs> this is getting crazy. I'm going to put the key loop in first if I learn from past mistakes. It's easier to do that first. And then I've got the little hole for the antenna. Connection plate's kind of just where it is. Look at that. That's so cute. And then if you just like fluff it a little bit and work out the edge, you can make it sit flat. Again, this case is a little bit awkward because of that antenna. And the antenna is not symmetrical. makes it really hard to work around. But I think we did an okay job. It's pretty satisfactory. So there's a look. With my other Tama, this one's a little more egg-shaped, huh? But I think it's okay. So that is the finished product. Looks pretty good. Nice and tight around. Nice and snug and protected. Kind of rolls, absorbs the impact if it, you know, doesn't land where it should. But yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So in the next video, we'll do this style of case. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, complicated in instruction, but not harder to do. They're both easy. Uh, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and this look at my new Tom and Meg and how to make this case. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it to the end, uh, put an egg in the comments below, like an egg emoji. So I know that you made it to the end. You're a rock star. Thank you so much for watching.